Hey Science. in today's video I'm going to show you how I set up my DIY fruiting tent to grow mushrooms at home. My goal was it to keep it as simple and cheap as possible and at the same time automate as much as possible. For example, I have a continuous air exchange without any control device by connecting the fruiting tent with a tube to the environment. So this guarantees me to have fresh air inside the tent without the need of any fan or exchange system. I've also found a pretty good solution for a humidifier which guarantees a humidity level 70% at the top and 95% at the bottom. This runs 24 seven so again, no need for any controlling device. I have just to power everything on and then I could go on vacation and come back and the conditions are as stable and constant as when I left. As I use the fruiting tent for time-lapse photography at the same time, this is a little special. So let's go over there to the fruiting tent and see how it's built. Okay, that's the area where I grow my mushrooms at home. Here we have the autoclave, a little bit of beach pellets and the laminar flow hood. Here I'm storing also some grow bags, a lot of grain spawn, more grain spawn, a lot of shiitake here. And that is my fruiting tent. So let's take a first look on the humidity supply. So this humidifier runs 24 seven. So maybe you're wondering why I'm not using the openings of the grow tent. Well, when we take a look inside, you'll notice that I'm actually filming time-lapse of mushrooms all the time. And that's actually a pretty good height to keep the humidity high without ruining my video footage I take. And here I have built some DIY glass so that I can always have a look inside the tent without the need of opening and making air exchanges, losing humidity or letting CO2 inside the tent. So here I can always check the CO2 level and the humidity level and can also have a look on the mushrooms I grew right now. Here we have some pink oyster mushrooms which are ready to harvest tonight. And you can see that I painted the back of the tent black. Yeah, just because for my mushroom time lapse. So normally there are at least one or two cameras inside the tent which take images for weeks. Over here I have another tent. I have temperature control for this tent so here we have constant 21 degree and this basically increases the colonization time of my grain spawn and the grow bags. Again at the moment I have a lot of piopino and shiitake growing over here. If you want to know how this is set up I have also the temperature control. I've also made a video about this tent on my youtube channel so I'm going to put a link for you in the description if you want to learn how this is set up. But now let's focus on the fruiting tent. This is one of the most important parts of the fruiting tent because here I have continuous fresh air supply. So here I have integrated a fan. I have removed the window so that the fan takes fresh air from outside and pushes it directly into the fruiting tent. This works great when I have just a few grow bags in my tent, but when I have a lot, I can here activate the fan and remove all the air from the inside and replace it with fresh air just to lower the CO2 level inside the tent. So let's take another look here. So here again we have the camera setup taking the time lapse of the pink oyster mushroom at the moment. I have a couple of different light source in the tent. Here the blue light which supports the growth of the mushrooms and the softbox which basically provides soft air for the video footage. And again, there you can see the humidity coming inside. This really runs 24 seven and it works pretty good. And one of the great advantages using a setup like this is that I have different humidity levels at different height. So at the bottom, I have 95% humidity. At this stage, I have 90. Here I have 80 and at this stage I have 70% humidity. So when new blocks enter the fruiting tent, I put them at the low stage where the humidity is higher. And after pinning and the first mushrooms appear, I put them a little higher as not that high humidity is needed anymore. Yeah, here I've also installed a filter and this also blocks the fresh air. Without the filter, I'd always have fresh air inside the tent, but the humidity would drop constantly and yeah, that's something which our mushrooms do not really like. So with the filter, I can keep the humidity at about 70 to 90% at the bottom 
and the CO2 level at about 500 ppm. Yeah, that's just the second tripod for my second camera, which I'm using for filming right now at the moment. I really have to exchange the electrics inside, which is kind of dangerous. I've already bought some new ones. Okay, what else do we have? As you can see, I have bought a second fan. So I plan to install a second tube, which takes the air from the inside. This is very important when you, for example, grow oyster mushroom or basically any kind of mushroom which produce a huge amount of spores. And when you have so many spores inside the tent, you probably don't want to have those spores in your house. So then I will have a second tube, which sucks out the air from the tent to blow all the spores outside in the garden. I've also some yellow sticky cards inside the tent because yeah, I, I had some problems with some fruiting flies inside the tent and yeah, I'm, I still figure out how to get rid of them. Yeah, and here we can take a look at the time-lapse I'm filming right now. Yeah, it looks, it looks perfect. When I started the time-lapse five days ago, there was not a single mushroom at this block. If you have any questions or ideas how to improve the tent even more, feel free to leave a comment below and we can discuss yeah, how to set up the perfect footing tent. I hope you enjoyed the video and here's a quick preview of the time-lapse of the pink oyster mushroom. The full video will be uploaded soon on my YouTube channel. See you.